Hey, how's it going everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Hermitcraft. We gotta go head over to Occutown to start off with today and check the profits on our Sneaky Ease store. It's been up for a while now and we gotta see how it's doing. Now we could, <laughs> we could just fly right there. It's two seconds away, just over the hill. Or, I love this, BWO has set up a subway to get to it from the main portal here. It takes longer actually, but you know, BWO, Underneath his bubbly, bumbling exterior, he's a wise man. He knows life is not about the destination. That's death. Life is about the journey. So he has he has made the journey a little bit more fun, a little bit more interesting here. Let's go for a ride. Woohoo! Aha, there we go. So we made it to Occutown now. That was pretty cool, right? I, th I think that's a neat little thing. Oh, snap. All right, this place is really, uh, whoo. <laughs> it's getting big. These buildings are pretty pretty tall, pretty full now. It's starting to feel more like a city than, than a town. Yeah, so I didn't hear anything from Scar about us being in his building here. So I don't know if he never found it or if he found it and he's just tolerating it, but, uh, we seem to be in the clear at the moment, but we should probably get out of here pretty quick <laughs> before we cause problems. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, let's go through this and just see how we did. So, unfortunately, I didn't mark the signs. I think this was a spruce log, so all gone. Bye-bye. Sold them all. That's great. Oh, even the second one here. I think that was dark oak, maybe. Sold a couple shroom lights. Not too many, though. And I think this was blaze rods. Wait a minute, one diamond, two diamond, one diamond. Uh-oh, somebody overpaid. <laughs> the jungle logs didn't sell. Coral, yeah, we sold the coral and the coral plants. I think this was the red vines. No birch logs sold. Oh, but we sold the warped and the crimson stems. That's the main thing I wanted to sell at the store here because I felt like uh, people needed that. And it looks like it's all gone. And even the leaves sold. Wow, so we were selling them six stacks for a diamond, which is a good price but uh, I didn't actually expect them to sell. So quartz is gone, okay. Glass, pretty much sold out of there. Again, somebody overpaid. <laughs> not gonna complain. I think again, they overpaid here. But uh, again, not gonna complain, I'll take it. And I think this was nether warts blocks and like the nether brick, nether brick blocks actually. Coal blocks and the mushrooms. Wow, so the grand total was just about four and a half stacks of the blue shinies. <laughs> That's quite a bit. Uh, I'm gonna have a nice warm campfire tonight. Uh, it, was, it was a good, good day. I gotta say, we did a lot better than I was expecting, so I, I'm happy with that. And I think it's time we close up shop. Oh, that's really close to me, actually. Ah! <laughs> and that is not all. ICEs has been on fire lately. Check this out. Looks like we sold a bunch of ice again. I did restock this since last time, and it's like all gone again. <laughs> Fact ice is all gone. I sold some blue ice, sold just about all the snow, and even uh, I have a barrel of like snow slabs here for free. Somebody put some diamonds in here, and uh, looks like somebody tripped the Canadian custom again, so let's see what we got this time. We got a, a spectral arrow. <laughs> One day someone's going to put something actually valuable in here. I I'm, I'm waiting for it. Today's not that day though, so the grand total. We got just about another two stacks. Pretty good. Oh, you know what? We gotta head back to Occutown, actually. I just remembered. Today is the last day of the bidding. So I think uh, B-Dubs is selling some spaces in these buildings where people can set up their shops or businesses or residential, whatever they want, but uh, they gotta pay them. <laughs> and uh, we have to put our bid in today, otherwise it's too late. So. 
I see Renda Giddy Dog. This is the main property I want, actually. I like it. It's kind of like at the heart of the city here. And I love this bench outside. I just want this bench. I want to sit on here. I want to feed the pigeons and like shout crazy things at the people that walk by. This is my place right here. Not a lot of space on the inside, but we might be able to make it work. So let's put a bid. We'll outbid Rendigity Dog by one. Let's go for 15. <laughs> I almost want to sign it just so no one else can bid. <laughs> I want this park bench. Okay, let's uh, let's check out a couple other things here. So I think this one has a bit more space. Lots of action on this one. Should we go for it? I will go for it. We're going to go to 18. Noise. What is the plan for today, everybody? Well, we're going to be building a new shop at the shopping district here. All the success of our other shops has gotten to my head a little bit, right to my brain. So we're going to be building the Brainy Ease. So here's the problem. We need to find a place to build Brainy Ease. I don't own this just yet. The bidding has ended, but I don't know who won. That's probably going to take a few days. We got to look around the shopping district for another location. And as you can see, just looking around our shopping district here, there is not a lot of free space available for us to put a shop. We can't just plop a shop down anywhere. It's going to be a big project here. We got to build an island, landscape it, put a building on that island, do the exterior and interior of the building. Then we can get to our redstone, which is going to be the main part of the project. It's going to be pretty complicated redstone today. I'm looking forward to figuring that out. <laughs> And then once the redstone's done, we're still not done because we got to program our shop, which is probably going to take a few hours as well. So we got to get to it here. I think we're going to be building our island just out by Shady Ease, probably. Okay, so here's the deal. We can't just put a layer of dirt over the water and call it an island. We actually have to build like a solid filled island. Which is uh, a little bit tricky because we need to put the redstone kind of under the water. And if there's water there, it's it's not going to work. So we got to solid fill the land. What I've done is I've laid out an outline here out of netherrack. And now we're going to fill in the center. We're trying out a building, like a land building technique I've been uh, thinking about for a while. I want to see if it actually works or not. Uh-oh, we hit our first snag already. I was hoping we'd be able to spread the Nilium, like bone meal the, the netherrack here. But it makes seagrass instead. All around our island here, we're going to add a one block ring of netherrack. Hey, I never said this was a great idea. I said I was trying it. Uh, now we have to go and fill in the interior with some sort of block. I'm going to use the nether wart blocks here because they're easy to collect and easy to mine. Okay, so we got our bottom layer of netherrack plus the border around the edges. And then we have two blocks of nether wart blocks filled in. Now we want to go like another 10 to 15 blocks up here. Like we want our island to be three to five blocks above the water at least. And in order to do that, we would probably have to place 20 to 30,000 blocks, right? <laughs> so I'm hoping we can avoid that by doing this. We're going to go and mine out the one layer. Now all the water should be gone. Having that border of netherrack around it makes sure our hoe doesn't break the blocks and let the water in. Because the last thing we want to do is flood this again. This is pretty weird. Okay, so this is what we're left with. And now I got some Nilium underneath some of these stems already. And basically, I got the stem in my offhand, bone meal in the other hand. And I just hold right click. And every time we do this, it should be adding many, many blocks above us. The cool thing about these trees is they grow through water. So it's going to be solid around yeah that's about the height i want it out of the water too so that's perfect and then we'll just add a layer of dirt on top of this after we're done shaping things you know i wasn't sure what it was going to look like but i can work with this this is this is my island <laughs> i made it myself oh i'm so proud of it it's so beautiful look at this oh it's incredible it, it needs a lot of work still Okay, but here's the the big question. The main reason we did it this way is because we want it solid. So when we dig down, are we going to run into water? Because that's the worst thing. When you're doing redstone, you dig down and then like water pours in. So we didn't encounter any water there. That's great. Most of the trees are at the level we want, but some of them grew super tall here. So we got to shave them down. Oh, I fall down. Woohoo! And just a little bit of TNT should do quite the job on them. Okay, so the TNT did most of the work for us, but we still got to clean it up a little bit. 
we want to keep the island, I think, maybe around this level here. So I'm going to go with the hoe now and just uh, kind of clear cut everything to that level. Then we're going to get left behind with a couple of these uh, cracks and stuff, which I'll probably fill in. Uh-oh, well, I made a little bit of a mistake here. I forgot to check the biome before building the island. I just assumed we're by the mushroom island. You know, it's going to be nice green grass, but uh, <laughs> we got the nasty pukey grass, unfortunately. So I tore that out and it's like, okay, what else do we do? I looked over there. It's like, oh yeah, false, uh, false made that blue biome, which I kind of liked actually. Right? I think it's pretty nice. So I thought, let's do something similar. We're close by. It'll kind of blend in. Uh, it's a little bit out of my comfort zone working with this color. But uh, we'll see how it goes here. So this is what our island's looking like at the moment. I added a border of netherrack around it to try contrast it with the water a little bit. But I might change that to nylium or a different block. So our island's a little bit on the plain side at the moment. We're going to be adding trees and and plants and other variations to it, I'm sure. But uh, just for today, we gotta keep it moving here, so let's get to the building now. Aha, very good everybody. So we got a pretty big chunk of our building complete here. I guess let's take a, a flyby and look at what we've done here. I'll give you a view of the island. So I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. It's a little bit weird. It's a little bit uh, blue at the moment. <laughs> Again, we got to do more landscaping. We got to cover up all that blue on the island with something, you know, try, try break it up a bit. But uh, yeah, I think it'll be okay. I think it'll be fine. So... Yeah, we got the front of the building done here, but then when we walk around the side, it's like, uh-oh, <laughs> it just kind of ends here. There's a reason for that. So when you're doing redstone, it's very important. Uh, build your facade for your machine first, like the thing you want the player to interact with. Figure that out first, then do your redstone, then put your building around that. If you put your building down first, a lot of the times... Uh, the redstone's not going to fit the way you want it to, and you'll have to bust down walls and redesign everything, and it just doesn't work. Um, so that's why I'm building it this way. We got our facade figured out. This is what the players are going to see when they interact with our machine, and uh, the redstone's going to go behind that. So that's why I didn't do any of the building behind that just yet. We got to do the redstone first. So yeah, this is our, our building. Interior's all done. Okay, everybody, so now the question you've probably been wondering, what are we actually building here? What is Brainy Ease? What kind of shop is this? Well, we're going to be building a trivia game system. Aha. <laughs> so this is a throwback to an old project I did a long time ago. I made like a Seinfeld trivia game using uh, piston tapes, and it was like one of my favorite projects I've ever done. It like taught me a lot about Redstone a long time ago. 
And I got thinking about it. How would I do it nowadays that we have more options av available? Yeah, so the tricky thing about making a trivia game in Minecraft is you somehow need to link the questions with the answers, and usually it's multiple choice. So the way I did it in the past with my piston tape method is uh, like you have answer A, answer B, answer C, answer D, and then you had redstone running into these, and you would check if the signal passed through. So if I said A, it can't pass through glass, so that would be a failed answer. And uh, if it passed through a solid block, it would be correct. So one of the issues with a system like this is you have to have the same number of answers for every question. So if you got four things in your piston tape, you always have to have four answers for each question. You can't just have like a true or false, yes or no, that only would need two or you can't have six or eight or whatever. But of course, you don't need to make a redstone system for, to make a trivia game in Minecraft. There are much simpler ways of doing it. I saw in adventure maps before, that, like they'll have a bunch of doors you can go through. Each one represents an answer to the question. And if you can get through, that means you got it right. Otherwise, it'll probably kill you. And that means you got the question wrong. Um, so that's a very simple way of doing it. But the problem is all these methods my piston tape method, the doors, they're all linked with physical space in Minecraft. Yeah, so the downside of that is your trivia game would have to exist as a long chain or sequence of questions. Like they'll have to go through question one, question two, three, four, five, six, seven. You'll probably have at least 10 questions in your chain. And what if somebody only wants to do one or two questions, right? They don't have that option. Or if you want to modify things or change the questions, you have to physically go to that change the signs or whatever you have set up that uh yeah it, it's uh just a bit of a rigmarole to the whole system we're trying to do something a little bit more simple although the redstone is going to be way more complicated <laughs> yeah so i think this is going to be pretty cool the idea i have is we're going to be using shulker boxes as kind of their own self-contained like programmable trivia questions so what we can do is name them let's do a little example here what was the fourth tree added to minecraft we'll ask that question okay so now when we look in the shulker box we can see that question at the top here so that's how we can ask it and then how do we answer it well we're going to put some items inside the shulker box and use this as like a menu system so we can hover over our answer and then press q to throw it into a hopper and then we got to make our redstone device to see if that's the correct answer or not so we know the jungle tree was the fourth one added, by the way. <laughs> so that would be the correct answer. How do we figure out if that's the correct answer or not? I think the way we're going to go around doing this is whatever the correct answer is, we're going to program that in by putting it in the first slot of the shulker box. And we're going to have two of them in the shulker box for the correct answer. So there's two jungle trees. And what's going to happen is once the shulker box is dispensed, we're going to unpower a hopper for a split second. That'll remove the first item. And they're not going to be able to see what that was. So they'll still only have the six, six options here. But then when they throw their item into another hopper, it's going to take the one it took and compare it with this one and see if they stack together. And if they do, that's a correct answer. If they don't, then it's a false answer. Now, don't worry. I'm going to be doing most of the redstone off camera here because we don't have time to go through everything together. Uh, and also, you guys probably aren't all that interested in it, let's be honest. <laughs> but uh, what I will do here, I'm just going to show you kind of the heart of the machine. Once you understand how this works, you'll kind of understand how the whole thing's going to work. So it's kind of the key. Uh, actually, the heart of the machine is pretty much just an item filter. I'm sure most of you are familiar with how those work. But basically, you put your items in, and it's going to let them flow through until they get to 41. And then the redstone torch turns back on, locks the hopper, and no more can go through. Is, is kind of how it works here. What we're going to be doing is something similar, but there's a, a cool little trick we can do. We're going to add 41 items in there. If you set this repeater to 4, something interesting happens here. It turns into a variable item filter. So let's take our jungle tree example. You put one in there, nothing happens. You put two, and then it pulls two items out. And then guess what? You have a fresh filter here so that for the next question, the jungle trees aren't in the way anymore. We, we can add 
like two redstone torches, for example. So let me show you how we're going to check if our answer is correct using our redstone. So it's going to take that first item out of the shulker box. That's going to go in our item filter, our variable item filter here. And then we need to compare our answer. It's going to go in this hopper. And then it's going to try to put that into the side here. And if they stack together, it's going to go in. If it doesn't stack together, like a redstone torch is not a jungle tree, it's going to go down instead. And then this, this comparator will check that, and that's a wrong answer. And then they merge together at this hopper. So this is like a two-way hopper. It can go to the right or it can go down. Um, if we put the jungle tree in, it goes into here, and then it goes down here. So the... The important thing to keep in mind about hoppers, though, is they will always try to go down before going sideways. So if we put a note block in here, even though this is pointing sideways, it doesn't end up in here. It ends up going down instead. That's the priority always. So we add another redstone device here to, to lock the hopper below for a moment to give it a chance to go sideways first. And then it gets pulled down here. Oh, snappers. All right, everybody, check it out. We got that redstone all finished here. I did it off camera and saved you the, the torture I just went through. <laughs> no, I love doing redstone, but man, it can get tricky sometimes. I definitely, uh, it, it went smoothly. Yeah, there was no problems, no issues whatsoever. Couldn't have uh, went any better. <laughs> it got stuck on a couple of things, uh, but it's all, it's all going smooth now. I think I worked out the last of the, the bugs with it. When you have so many different things working together in a system, it's it's going to have issues, like guaranteed. So all in all, though, it doesn't take up that much space. It, it turned out pretty good. So this is how big we need the building to be. It has to go at least up to here to cover the redstone. OK, so now let's talk shop here. How is this actually going to operate on the server? Well, I had my fun building it. Now I'm hoping the hermits are going to come by and uh, have some fun with answering the trivia questions. And uh, maybe you guys as well can get involved by giving me trivia questions to add to the system. It's really easy to do that now that we got the whole redstone thing set up. I left the lectern here for the hermits to read. So it's Brainy, Brainy E's trivia. You'll get an idea of what the shop is about. The current theme for the trivia is Minecraft or Minecraft mechanics, maybe. We might expand to other types of questions. Uh, later, I would like to do a hermitcraft theme and maybe... Other things like Seinfeld, of course. <laughs> Prizes for the trivia game is spruce logs at the moment. So that, the idea is they're going to put a diamond in this chest, in the shulker box. If they get the question right, then they get their diamond back, plus spruce logs as a, a reward. If they get it wrong, I keep their diamond and they get nothing. So that's how I'm going to make my money with the shop. Um, okay, so... An important thing here, it says the lights turn off when the system is out of questions. Check back later. So I don't want them to think the shop is broken or something. If the lights are off in the front here, that shows I need to add more questions to the system because there's only a finite amount. Uh, we could put hundreds in there, but I got to make up hundreds of questions then, right? <laughs> and uh, they'll probably run out at some point. We have a way of showing that to them. Now let's actually give it a try here. So I made up four sample questions we can try out. To load them into the system, we just add a bunch of chests in the back here, throw them in, and it's ready to go. So that's all I got to do. Now to play the game, let's head back here. You have the shulker box for putting your diamonds in. This is a smart system. It will only take one diamond, like if you put a full stack in here. And then our question appears in front of us. Here we go. What cannot be moved by pistons? You can see we're kind of limited on the text of the questions. That's the one downside of this. So, hmm, what could it be? What could it be? I think it's it's end rods, right? Nope. Got it wrong. Okay, so we got nothing. Nothing happened. And because we left our diamonds in here, we don't have to like keep putting one in every time. It'll just take it from the stack. But if I remove these, then uh, it'll end after we... Uh, answer this question so what hermit smells like cheese of course we only go for factual questions in our game here of course be the blow we got some fireworks when we get the question right we got the, our spruce logs 32 and we got the diamond back i don't know if you saw that but they fall from the middle here there's a bunch of droppers up there 
And now the diamond block is back down here because there's no diamonds in the system. But if we add one, we'll get our next question. You can see our lights are on right now because the system has questions loaded into it, which improves fishing rates. Now, this is something else cool we can do. We don't just have to use the items to represent our questions. We can actually name the items, like fishing at dawn, fishing at day, fishing at dusk, night, fishing above Y32, below 32, fishing while sunny, while raining, or nothing. So we have, we can add so many things here too if we want like lots of multiple choice. Let's go for nothing. Oh, that's the wrong answer. Oh my goodness. Now we only have one question left in the system. Let's pay up. Oh yeah, and if you leave these in, I have an automatic shutoff system so it doesn't steal a diamond from you when it runs out of questions, which is kind of important. We know the answer to this one. And now you can see the lights turned off because we're out of questions. This shutter is shut. And if we check our shulker box here, it still has the 42 diamonds in, so it didn't steal one when it ran out of questions, which was something it was doing before I <laughs> added a, a system for it. Um, so now let's go to the back here, and I'll just show you what happens. I'm not going to go through all the redstone, but it places the shulker box, it takes that first item out of it, puts in the item filter, then it does the comparison, and then the items get put back into a shulker box down below here. It shoots the, the shulker box out of this dispenser, items flow into it and it repackages them back into the box and this is what we get left with at the end of things so if they got the question wrong it should be a perfect package still let's check out uh, our boxes so get all four of them down here and okay so we got this one wrong we said nothing and now you can see it's actually all in the exact same position as when it first started. This one we got right. We, we selected jungle trees and they stack together, unfortunately. But this also shows me when a hermit gets a question right. I can see it because it'll be stacked together. But if I want to re-enter it into the system, I have to manually put it back where it was. I can't uh, automate that in any way that I know of anyways. We got this one right, so they stack together as well. And we got this one wrong, so they're exactly as they were. So for the questions they get wrong, we're just going to re-add it to the system most likely. But if they get it right, you know, we might want to consider removing it and adding new questions so they don't keep getting the same questions in and getting bored of our trivia game here. But there are a lot of this hermits on the server, so maybe they can get it right three to five times before we remove it. Kind of, Kind of makes sense to me anyways. Anyways, I'm tired of talking. You're probably tired of listening to me. So let's end our episode here. If you have ideas for the game or questions you want to suggest, please let me know in the comments and uh, I'll take a look at it. Hopefully we can get them added to the game. But thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Take care. Bye-bye.